Hey everybody, Thomas Joseph here, and today I am really excited to share with you a kitchen conundrums on onion rings, one of my favorite things. Now, when you've tried to make onion rings at home, have you ended up with something like this, a soggy, oily, and just completely <laughs> unappealing onion ring? Well, today I'm gonna share with you a restaurant quality onion ring recipe that is foolproof. So, let's get started. The most important part of an onion ring, I think, is the onion itself. I'm using a Vidalia onion today, but you could also use a Maui onion or any other type of sweet onion. I'm not using one of those harsh yellow onions because I prefer the sweetness and subtlety of a sweet onion as opposed to those conventional yellow onions, which are a little bit more punchy um, and have kind of a, a harshness to them when they're made into onion rings. So I need two sweet onions and I'm gonna cut them into half inch rings. So I'm gonna discard this first piece here, but do save this. You can put it into a resealable plastic bag and throw it in your freezer and you can pull it out whenever you're making a stock or a broth, and it also cuts down on food waste. Now, I wanna cut my onion into half inch pieces. A even thickness is best when making onion rings and you don't want something that's too, too thick because what's gonna happen is it's gonna take longer to cook and longer to fry. And the outside coating is going to burn before the onion has a chance to cook fully on the inside. It's all about balance here. So take your onions and break them apart into rings. When we're making onion rings, you wanna have a two-step process. You're gonna have a mixture of flour for dredging, which is coating the onion rings in, and then a batter, which will stick onto that dredging of flour nicely. So I have one cup of all-purpose flour here in this bowl and one cup in this shallow baking dish in front of me. To the bowl, I'm gonna add a teaspoon of coarse salt a little bit of white pepper. Now, you could certainly use black pepper. I love the flavor of black pepper, but white pepper is nice here because it really blends into the coating nicely. Also, we're gonna add a half teaspoon of baking powder, and I like to add baking powder to the batter because it adds a lightness, a crispiness, almost a featheriness to the batter, which is really fantastic. That's what you're looking for, a light and crisp and airy coating. Now, I'm gonna whisk the dry ingredients together here just to evenly distribute the baking powder, the salt, and the pepper. And now we're ready for our wet ingredients. Now, before you add the wet ingredients here, because we're adding beer today and a little bit of ice water and the beer has bubbles, which again is going to encourage a nice flakiness to this batter when it goes into the oil, you wanna make sure that your oil is preheated. Now, I have a large Dutch oven over here heating over a medium high heat and we're looking for a 375 degree temperature. That's the right temperature for frying onion rings. I always like to use a wire rack in the bottom of my Dutch oven, which helps to lift the foods off the bottom so that they aren't in contact with direct heat. And we're almost there, so now I'm gonna mix together my batter. Now this is a beer batter, which I really love because beer has really great carbonation, really great bubbles to it, which adds wonderful texture to your batter in the end, but it also has a little bit of flavor to it, which is also really nice. So I need a cup of beer, and I'm using a Pilsner today. You could also use a lager something that's mild, nothing that's too, too dark, but again, something that has a little bit of flavor to it because that's really what we're looking for. So a cup of beer and two tablespoons of icy cold water. You don't want ice here, but you want the water to be really, really cold. So I'm gonna mix that into my beer and then I'm going to pour it right into my flour and I'm gonna gently mix this together. You don't want to over stimulate the batter here. You don't want to whisk too vigorously because you wanna keep those wonderful bubbles in the batter, but you also want something that's nice and evenly textured so that you can coat our onion rings. So this looks good, guys. You can see it's almost the texture of a really light pancake batter, and it still has some lumps to it, which is fine, because these lumps will kind of settle out as we coat our onion rings. So don't be fearful of the lumps. Now, for the dredging, we're gonna take our dredging flour. I'm gonna add a little bit of salt to it. Again, I always think it's important to season all of the layers whenever you're breading or coating anything, because that's how you'll get the most flavor to stay on your onions. So give this a little bit of a whisk. And now I'm going to take onions that are similar in size. When you're making onion rings at home, you're gonna to have to do this in batches, guys. So 
this is something that maybe you should do with your family together, kind of while you're eating, make it a little bit casual. You're gonna have to fry the onions in stages because these bigger pieces are, might take a little bit longer to cook, whereas the smaller inner rings won't take as much time. So do them by size. Now, the dredging in the flour, again, this is something that we do with chicken cutlets or pork cutlets or anything like that. It helps to adhere onto the natural moisture of the onion and create a dryness that then will help the batter to stick to it. So once you have a nice coating of flour, these go right into your batter. And this batter here is also great with fish. You could certainly use it on fish or other vegetables, like even scallions would be really fantastic or ramps. Try experimenting with this process and recipe with your favorite proteins or vegetables. So once I get these all coated in flour and into this bowl, we're ready to fry. So the oil is up to 375 degrees, the perfect temperature. I'm gonna gently coat the onions in the batter. You can use a fork here or a pair of tongs or your fingers. And then these go right into your oil. You can let a little bit of the batter drip off. And you're gonna fry these onion rings until they're nice golden brown and the onion is cooked throughout. And that's gonna take anywhere from three to four minutes. So not too, too long. So it's been about a minute and a half and you can see the underside of the onion ring is turning nice golden brown, this one in particular. And this is the point at which you want to give them a gentle, Flip. Now you can do this with a fork. I think it's easy to do it with a fork or a pair of tongs. And you're gonna continue to cook these for about another minute and a half to two minutes until the other side is a nice golden brown color. All right, so it's been about four minutes here, guys, and our onion rings are looking fantastic. Golden brown, nice and puffy and light. Now, as always, I like to remove any fried foods to a wire rack so that they don't steam on the bottom. And onion rings are something that you need to get to the table as quickly as possible. So scoop them all out of the oil, repeat the process, but keep carrying these over to the table, guys, because everyone's going to gobble these up. Now, as you know, you've seen me fry before, giving a seasoning of salt after they come out of the oil is what is necessary here, you guys. And I can't wait to try these. Now I'm gonna give it the crunch test. Hold it. Oh my gosh, so delicious. The onion is nicely cooked. It's not raw at all. And the batter is still nice and crunchy and flaky. There you go, guys. Proof that this is the world's best onion ring recipe. Now, as always, we love to hear from you. So write in the comment section below or reach out to us using the hashtag Kitchen Conundrums. Enjoy your onion rings. And as always, guys, click like and subscribe.